In June 2012, I traveled to a quiet little river in southeastern New England called Red Brook, home to one of the few remaining runs of wild sea run brook trout in New England. Red Brook, part of the Theodore Lyman Reserve in the Massachusetts towns of Wareham, Bourne, and Plymouth, flows for four miles from White Pond to Buttermilk Bay, which is connected to the Cape Cod Canal and Upper Buzzards Bay. The trout in Red Brook spend the winter in salt water, but move upstream during the warmer months. Yet much is still unknown about exactly how far these fish range, how fast they grow, and how long they live. In an attempt to answer some of these questions, the members of the Massachusetts Division of Fisheries and Wildlife, the National Geological Survey, the Sea Run Brook Trout Coalition, and Trout Unlimited have teamed up to conduct a study in Red Brook in which the trout are collected and implanted with tiny acoustic tags and transmitters. When these go out in the salt water, and what we're going to be doing today is electrofishing, and we're going to be doing pit tagging, which is putting in tags into the fish. Yeah. And that enables us to follow their movements within the stream. We're also going to be putting in sonic tags, acoustic tags, uh, that put out pulses of sound, and we can detect the fish when they actually go into the salt water. Wow. So this is really some uh, research that hasn't really been done before down in this area. Right. And now, how far out? Do you know how far out do these trout go into salt water? Do you have any sense of how far they? Well, range? historically they uh, strayed not too far from the stream. Some of our acoustic tagged fish from last year have actually gone out near Mass Maritime Academy, wow. right near the Cape Cod Canal. Yeah, no kidding. And in fact, the Cape Cod Canal used to be known as the Monument River. It was a salt or brook trout stream mm -hmm. at one time, and then they built the canal. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Wow. So if you're out there fishing for striped bass and you happen to catch a brook trout. You're not dreaming or on hallucinogenics. Right. It's, it's right. actually you're very it's lucky. Actually a, and if it's actually people a trout. do happen to catch one of these trout, they should basically immediately release it and let us know about it because these are such a rare thing. We're trying to preserve these for future generations. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fish that is a salt or brook trout is some great genetic potential, and we really need to preserve that for the future mm -hmm. if we have any hope of restoring these fish to their former glory. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Steve, for okay. the uh, the rundown on the brook. To collect the trout, a team led by Steve Hurley stuns the fish with mild electrical current, a method known as electrofishing. As the tiny trout float to the surface, helpers with fine mesh nets scoop them up and place them in coolers. Once the trout are collected, they're transported to a mobile lab manned by members of the geological survey. The fish are then anesthetized, measured, weighed, and then carefully implanted with tiny pit tags and, in the case of larger trout, acoustic transmitters. 13 inches. Yeah. You let me know. You want them when you're set Weight for the numbers on Weight is... Oh, okay. 120. 120? Yeah. Okay. So, so what we're doing here, and Doug and Kayla are doing behind me, is they're sampling the fish. They're getting lengths and weights. They're taking scales for um, aging, for genetics, so that we can look at parentage. And um, they're applying a pit tag, which is this small one here. So that's the pit tag. It's a passive integrated transponder. It's 12 and a half millimeters. This has a 10 digit code unique to this tag, which allows us to follow these fish through. No battery. Mm -hmm. So as long as the fish is alive, pick that fish up, we'll get an ID on it. Mm -hmm. That way we can do survival. We can do growth rates because we'll have time points. This is going to identify the fish. This particular tag here is, this is our acoustic tag. This is going to allow us to monitor the fish out in the bed. We have a couple receivers in the stream and we have receivers out in the bed. So this tag is what's gonna allow us to follow it out into the saltwater environment. And you actually you actually sew that into the body, body yeah, of the trout. Acoustic tag? Yep, this, this tag we can go down to 60 millimeters with a fish. This tag we're doing 165, 180, depending on the size and weight of the fish. Right. Much bigger fish to put this in. Right. This one, a little tiny incision, just slip it in, 
This one we have to make a larger incision with a few sutures. What is the survival rate of the trout when you after you perform all this and you release them? Is it pretty high? It's high. I mean, th these pit tags we've done studies where 99% okay. survival. 99%. Yeah. Wow. The, the, this one's probably it might be a little lower, but it's it's really high. Right. And so when you're out, how do you pick up that the acoustic tag? Do you have to go out there with a with the devices to you monitor? You could use that? this machine here. Do this. These are set for a variable uh, for when the codes go off, so it, it might not go off right now. Right. It, go, it pings. Uh -huh. So every, you know, between 90 seconds and five minutes, this will ping. So you go out in a boat? Nope. You have, we have fixed receivers uh -huh. that will pick this up. Like I was saying, there's two in the stream, and then there's ones out in the bay. So as the fish comes into um, range of that receiver, and as it pings, it'll pick it up. Oh, no kidding. This one, you have this one you have to physically either use that little white reader, mm -hmm wand it over because that reader generates the field that picks this tag up. In stream we built the antennas that gen they're bigger, they span the stream, but they generate a field and you just get a fixed point in the brook there. Interesting. Yeah. Once the tags are implanted, the fish are revived and then released back into Red Brook, where they will help biologists learn more about their behavior, growth rates, and range, and ultimately help protect and enhance populations of this unique coastal fish.